My project was on the history of optical illusions. Um, the very first well-known optical illusion was formed by Giambo Battista della Porta, and he was an Italian um, playwright and polymath who came up with the idea of projecting an image onto a, onto a plane where there isn't the image. Um, we have me drowning in a water, in a glass of water. This is quite difficult to do because the cup was rounded and it's, it has water in it. Um, but we got there and that's me in a picture through the object um, and through the plane and shines onto the object. And then this light um, gets reflected off onto a photographic plate. So our experiment was we were comparing the energy transference of various lenses. So we started with the Friends of Lens, which is a big thin lens made up of different concentric circles, which means it has a very large area but very short focal length. This allows you to plot the time of ignition of some paper on a graph against the area divided by the focal length squared. You can see that this one's the Friends of Lens, so as you get a bigger area, the time of ignition shrinks down. So we got our lenses ready and uh, as usual we checked the weather forecast and we had seven days of clouds. So just as we were planning how to work it out in the lab, uh, the sun came out to allow us to take a couple of data points for a couple of lenses. So um, after doing a ray tracing of the, uh, the sun, we, here you can see that's the sun there, this is the lens. That's the lines there, that's the image the sun formed on the paper and that's where the hole is formed. We can, uh, using the size of the hole that is formed here as the area, we can plot the um, angle that the sun is in the sky by using the form from the graph um, and we got it to 0 0.5 uh, two degree, 0 0.532 degrees which was according to NASA uh, 0 0.001 degree out so pretty confident with that. So I made a camera obscure, obscure which is also known as a pinhole camera and the way it works is by um, a contained kind of like dark area having one bit of light come through, so it'll be like a small hole. And because light travels in a straight line, it will just go straight through, and it creates an image on the other side. Um, okay, so tell me something about your your actual setup. Mine was be so the, the light would go through here, and then the image would be created here. And if this was like photo paper, you could actually create an actual... So we're doing a presentation on aberration, or like a poster, and you've got a goal which is to study how you can make a Kepler telescope better, because aberration is sort of an error in rays, where if it's too far from the centre principal axis, it starts, starts to deform away into more of a wrong focal point, if that makes sense. Now, there, there was a guy called Ludwig von Sydow who discovered in 1850s five monochromatic aberrations yeah, which are spherical, which is in a spherical um, sort of material, once towards the edge refract more and go to a shorter focal point. Chromatic aberration, uh, the ones that go that are parallel but come at an angle end up going to the wrong point, but at the same like distance away from it, which is wrong, higher or lower. Astigmatism is when two rays from two different planes go to the wrong, create two foci points. <laughs> And you've got field curvature, which is, again, rays that come in at a different angle require a point closer to the screen than the actual screen, so you have to have like a curved screen to sort of prevent. So, we want to, to apply that to a, to a Kepler telescope, which is a compound system of two convex lenses separated by distance. Uh, we found the effect of focal length of that system as a result of the uh, matrix multiplication here and we found this and we got the, f the lens equation from this matrix multiplication not ever so clear so it goes sort of like that and that gives here. this for the thin lens you ignore the n1 minus d over nr1 r2 and so you making this delta we get n1 minus 1 delta equals 1 over f and we sub this in with the effective focal length uh, and we get this now, to get the optimum scenario where aberration is minimised, we differentiated with respect to n and set to zero. Here are my interferometers. 
I used a Michelson interferometer to find the wavelength of a laser. So we moved a mirror using a micrometer to measure the distance moved by this mirror and we counted the amount of fringes displaced on the screen and as the fringes would move like this. And we had a set marker where we could count easily how many fringes had been displaced. Um, and so that's how we found the wavelength of this laser, which ended up being 730 nanometers, which is about right as red lights between 620 to 750 nanometers. So and this presentation the is about the formation the of um, a protocol that we've been using to measure the refractive index of any liquid. Um, we've been mainly uh, experimenting it on more of them. Down, comes back out and speeds up again. So that line, that line, and that line are parallel because these angles are really yeah. three to one. Outside noise.